Oh, you meant buy a pink ward. Yeah, no, never. Literally never. I'll go my entire life without intentionally buying another pink ward. Pink, if you buy pink wards, you are literally a Redditor. Literally a Redditor. No! Ah, it's close. It's close. Ah, it's fine. It's fine. I get two kills. LT. I did not mean to take LT. But it's okay. It's okay. We'll take the LT. We'll take the LT. The BLT. But yeah, if you buy pink wards, you're literally a Redditor. Just understand where they are through intuition. Right? I didn't have a ward on Olaf, but I knew where Olaf was. And I'm going to go find Olaf again. Very soon. I'm going to push this wave, and then I'm going to find Olaf. That's what we're going to do. Wait, I'm going Yasuo runes right now, on accident. Yeah, see, this guy knows where he is, and he doesn't have a pink ward. Because he's not a Redditor. This ammunition guy, not a Redditor. Nice. Ah. Ah, shock blast. Okay, bros. Nice. Well played. Looks like one of my shock blasts. That's my, uh, that's my duo buddy, Brixton. Lucky Brixton, the homie. But yeah, that's a, that's a Warwick player of mechanics on Jace. But also, the average NA pro on Jace, right there. I hate the fact that Collegiate exists in League. Actually so cringe as a concept. Like, that's all of the tier 3 players, but it's because League is such a college player game. That, like, I could play it. It'd be possible for me to play at a collegiate level in terms of gameplay. But, like, I'm not going to college, bros. I don't want to ever go to college. But that, as an opportunity, is doomed. Honestly, since Legend Tenacity is nerfed, I might think about going uh, Alacrity. Because I have Alacrity right now. It's feeling pretty good. It's feeling pretty good. Teacher is distracting students with esports so they fail and waste money. And then have to buy another semester of courses. On mechanics though? Because I don't really, like, I don't really have anything to aim for right now. That's the problem. Like, I could hit Challenger again, which, I mean, yeah, that's actually a good goal, but... Like, what would it, what would it mean? What would it mean? You're washed? I am washed. It's just the problem of having no goal. Like, what am I, what am I playing for? What is my ultimate reason why I'm doing things? It's just hard to play when you don't really have any aims. Tankai sounds like a hater, but Tankai is not a hater. Off train guy in now. That's an even better way for me to have just a baseless, um, no goals grind. I want my no trends grinds to be something that is natural. Be something that is natural. I could consider playing blood. Or is this just not really something that I can super go for right now? Like, I don't have that drive, that determination. You know what I mean? Uh, 
Uh, I'll ghost right now, sure. LT. Yeah, just Zed's too much of a one-trick champ. That's never gonna be a thing. Time to quit League? I mean, yeah, that's the logical conclusion if you don't have your goals. Which, I mean, yeah, something to consider. Especially right now. League is not in a spot where it's, uh... It is a good time to quit League. For pretty much everybody, it's a good time to quit League. Like, it's very clear that Riot just doesn't care about the game. And they just kind of give you just kind of bullshit lies to make you think that they're actually caring. Silas needed to manage his E right there. Like the whole cinematic thing. They thought they could get away with the cinematic. They thought they could get away with having that trash cinematic. And it was only after they got so much community pushback that they were like, No, hey guys, trust me, it's not actually, like, it's circumstances outside our control. Like, they could have said that before they released it. But they just hoped that the pushback wouldn't have been as much as it actually was. Because deep down, rioters aren't gamers. Rioters are people who... You look at every rioter's Twitter account, right? And it's like, X Facebook, X... Um... Google. X... Uh... Twitter, you know what I mean? X Cloud9. Like, they all work for the same, just random, no-name San Francisco orgs. Call it Google and no-name org. Yeah. Yeah, I know. They just all work for all these orgs. And they aren't actually League players anymore. League devs are not League players. So, like, even when they're looking at, like, forums and stuff, and trying to understand what people are saying, they can't. Because they aren't, one, they aren't gamers, and then two, they aren't league players. So they can't really understand what the context of the complaining is, if it's actually legit complaining, or if it's just, you know, mindless gamer QQing, you know what I mean? And that's also a thing, is like, there's nobody who's actually taking accountability for anything negative that ever happens at Riot. Riot is basically just Nice, you know what I mean? A complete immunity from ever taking accountability. Ah, uh, okay. I'll take the L. I'll take the L. But also, <laughs> taking an Ash ult when you have no tenacity? Worst feeling in the world. Yeah. Because, I mean, I have overgrowth bone plating. If Riot had gamers, Mundo wouldn't be so broken, bros. Nice. Yeah, that's pretty, pretty clean. Pretty clean, bros. Good. Do I have to stay for this? Why don't they get feedback from pro players? One, pro players are some of the dumbest human beings to ever exist. Um, yeah. yeah. Like, so many pro players are people who just literally do nothing but just play the game. And they are really hyper confident in one thing, but like... <laughs> If you ever hear, like, double lift, talk, hey. Uh, it's not, it's not a very, uh, smart pro player. A very simple guy. Give you an example of a double lift thing, right? Uh, Thorin, right? In 2020. Okay, yeah, we still have the Drake. Uh, 
In 2020, Thorin. Talked about why Double Lift got kicked off TSM after he won the championship with them and gave like all of the details on everything. And when he said that, Double Lift was like, no, this isn't true. And a couple years later on his stream, Double Lift kind of completely forgets and then says, hey, this is exact, this is what happened. And says exactly word for word everything Thorin said. So at the time he was like, no, 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 this isn't true, this isn't true. And then a couple years later it's like, here's how it happened, bros. Exactly like he said. Do I like Navori? No. Navori more like cringe-ory. Hot take? What's the hot take? When Cutie Pie was better than him? Yeah. If I'm a Cutie Pie, I took the game seriously. He'd be the best, uh... Best trend in it. Yes, he would be the best trend in it and the best AD carry in it. What did he get kicked off? TSM? Uh, I I don't remember the details off the top of my head. But there is one thing is that... After 2020... Double Lift reached out to every single pro team. All 10 LCS teams, and nobody wanted him. Yeah. None of the 10 teams wanted him. Take me, guys, please. I'm good. Trust. I mean, it's also that, like, he's going to be super expensive, gross. Ah, okay. So it's like, why spend 1 million on double lift when you could spend 80k on a rookie who might be 80% of double lift? You'd have to pay Cutie like 10 million dollars a year to get his uh, skills. True story. That's how much he's worth. Also, like, Cutie Pie does not want to play Pro League again. So to make Cutie Pie pr play Pro League, you'd basically have to pay his sponsorship rate of how much it would cost to get from his sponsors. I'm making different plays right here because I have no tenacity, so I can't walk into Vygar Cage. Just, just that's a that's a thing to keep in mind. Is like I'm I'm making different types of plays because I can't make that type of play. Yeah, just fuel to get the gene procs. Being a league pro sucks, and it doesn't even make a lot of money. Although, that does kind of go into one thing that was always said is, um, NA is a streamer region, and uh, why would you be a pro player when you could just be a streamer? When it's like, how many, how many good players who could have been legit pro players when in the streaming. How many of them? How many of those exist? How many big streamers could have actually been really good pro players if they tried? There's people like Cutie Pie and Dominate who were pro players at one point and then used their pro player status to build a brand elsewhere. Okay. But, like... Actual streamers who are good at games? Kadeem Alford. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's pretty correct. Uh, it's really just box box. Only one who would probably be, like, potentially good enough. To do that kind of thing. And only being good at the game? That's... N yeah, that's not what I'm... That is a good point, in that, like... All of these really good players can't just become a streamer. Gone are the days 
in old league where you could just kind of put on a webcam, be a semi decent pro player, or a semi decent pro level player, and get good. Tyler One is really good at manipulating solo queue. He's a really level one. Okay. Which TF played one pro? Like, yeah, he TF played is an example of somebody who has the skills to go pro. So when people say TF Blade couldn't go pro, right? They look at um when he's in team environments, he'll literally just mute comms and then play. I keep on I keep on doing this, bros. I keep on buying a vamp scepter thinking it builds into Eclipse. Tarzane is also another one who could play pro. If Tarzane was in EU, he would be still in LEC right now. Tarzane was an EU player. He just doesn't fit NA culture. Arzaind is a typical her uh, typical European. He's real like Arzaind actually has a lot more mental than a lot of uh top LAC pros. It's just that, like, it doesn't work with NA. NA is, uh, Care Bear region. Where you gotta kinda coddle people. What everybody's, everybody said about the region. Who's been, like, EU players, uh, EU coaches and stuff who've worked there. You just kinda gotta coddle your players and you can't actually say anything negative towards them. So, somebody like Tarzane is the most toxic, vile human being to ever exist in NA. And in Europe, he's Tuesday. Let's just ghost without looking at what's going on. Full one shot. Ah! Ah! Okay, let me just not ult. Yep. Yep! Let me just not ult. You can't blame them. You cannot blame players. Get away from me! <laughs> Get away from me! Ah, yeah, that's that's awkward. But that's my thing, is that like... So, TF Blade's playstyle is hyper-optimized for what is good in solo queue. But he does still have the raw skills to... Um, on a raw talent level. He is uh, better than a lot of pro players. It's just that in a pro environment, he'd be a lot worse because he doesn't train pro level skills. Yeah, like being a one trick, you know? Like, look at the shy, right? Guy's a Riven one trick. And uh, it's not until he's actually kind of goaded into playing pro that he starts learning other champions, becoming a, a literal world champion, you know what I mean? And probably the highest peak, the Shy in his prime had the highest peak out of any player. I don't think that Tarzane's mental is inherently bad for being a big pro player. I really don't think it is. If you hear anybody who's played with Faker talk about their experiences with Faker, they will say that Faker is the most toxic person they've ever played with. That's a really common experience that people have, is that Faker is really toxic. And you don't get that from his like public persona, you know? He's just a big, nice, quiet, shy boy. But yeah, he is really uh, toxic and demands a lot of his teams. Which is exactly what every top player in every game is like, basically. Yeah, that's the that's thing is that it's just not tolerated in an end. It's the same thing with Dardoch. Let's talk about somebody who actually went pro. 
Everybody, everybody had this idea of like, hey, Dardock, really talented player. We're gonna be the team that actually unlocks Dardock, and we're gonna get the talent out of Dardock, right? But it, it just, none of them could. And I believe that Dardock was actually on all ten LCS teams, except for Cloud Nine. I believe that Cloud9 is the only LCS team that Dardock was never on. Every single team took some of the Dardock uh some of the Dardock Kool-Aid. The thing is, is that like if Dardock went to Europe in like season five, season six, he would have been a top or he would have been a competent at worst middle of the table uh jungler. And he would have been able to exist on teams just fine. Oh, I'm just gonna ghost out. I played that as if I had phase rush, by the way. Yeah, I guess I just used both thumbs. I'm just getting zeal because it's what I had money to buy. Water is wet, bros. So there's like the technical idea of if water is wet, but come on, bros. I don't care about the technical arguments that water is not wet. Being wet is a state of having water on you. Water has water on it. Therefore, water is wet. It's not hard to figure out, bros. The Shy peak for it? The Shy would just do any kind of random setup and just gap the best players ever, and it would be such a massive, miraculous thump. He would also have games where he would go 0 and 10, but him going 0 and 10 is exactly kind of like the kind of stuff that would make him be. The super, super best player. Think about the worst person who's just unapologetically running it down. Literally 18 deaths in your game. Like 18 deaths in a 20 minute game, right? That guy is the shy. But then think about that guy, but the opposite. Where he's not going 0-18, he's going 18-0. And, and he's doing it against... Uh, top level LPL and LTK teams. That's that's the shy. The shy is the opposite of the O and eighteen Peter. I accidentally took the wrong rune. If I'm taking Yasuo runes right now. Water does have water on it technically, pretty much always. Yeah, exactly. That's what I mean. I received insider knowledge that during Season 6, Tarzane was going to be drafted for Echo Fox. But they didn't after he failed his behavior check. Yeah. Those behavior checks are just so cringe, bros. Of like, oh, we gotta do a, uh, a little, little, little test to see if you've been a good boy. Been a good boy in solo queue? No? Well, uh, you can't have a career, bro. Because you said naughty words in a solo queue game. Yeah, technically water is always wet, yeah. Yep, yeah, see you guys? That was a pretty fun game. Thank you guys all for watching. We're getting our a smurf ranked up. So, see you guys all in the next video. That was just fun, fun little game. Uh, one phase, uh, went lethal tempo on accident, but still had a pretty banger early game, and uh, talked about a lot of interesting concepts. Let me know what you guys think about things that we talked about about the game. You guys all in the next video. This build feels really great. Some of those one shots, kind of funny. Uh, that dive onto Ash didn't happen on the 1st of February. There was no dive that happened. See you guys all in the next video. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye. And good night.